My name is Eric Schimmelfenny, and I'm a fabricator who uses SketchUp to do anything from 3D printing to CNC machining to woodworking to trade show booth planning. And I'm gonna give you some tips today about how you can use SketchUp better in your fabrication workflow. Okay, so this isn't necessarily a specific tip, but more of a good practice for workflow. So I designed these cabinets that fit under a washer and dryer, and these cabinets are built on a CNC machine, and they came out looking like this. And you could just cut a bunch of rectangles out using your table saw um, or a CNC machine, but I actually took it a few steps further. So I wanted these drawer slides to mount properly, and I actually modeled in SketchUp all of the holes that are needed for these drawer slides and all of these connectors. So I cut the parts all at once um, and everything lined up and I spent way less time using a tape measure and hand drilling in the shop and I put all of that uh, complexity into SketchUp. So I was able to make sure that everything fit and then everything lined up. So uh, my advice would be that the more you can design, the more you can figure out ahead of time in SketchUp, the easier the, your fabrication in the shop is going to be and the less time you're going to spend doing a lot of handwork. All right, um, in this tip, I'm gonna show you how to model faster by using copies of different components. And so what I mean is something on a simple tabletop like this. And let's say I wanted to add a round over, something like this, pretty easy to do on one corner, but we've gotta do it three more times. And so there's an easier way to do this. You can set this table up so that you can do one corner on one side and that will copy on all four sides of your table. And this is um, a way to model a little bit smarter to make your job easier as your model gets more complex. I'm gonna draw a new tabletop on top of this one. And I'm gonna move it over here. And I'm actually gonna take the line tool and I'm just gonna snap to the midpoint, come across here, snap to the midpoint here. And I'll use the push-pull tool and I'm just gonna get rid of all of these parts. I'm left with one quarter of this tabletop. I'm gonna select the whole thing, make this a component. And the name doesn't really matter. Um, we'll call this quarter tabletop. And then I'm gonna make a copy of it over here. And I'm gonna go into the first component here and I'm gonna start making that round over like this. And we'll take the push-pull tool. And so you can see that I've got two components that are exactly the same. And what I can do is I can right click on this one and select flip along, components red in this case, and that will flip it along this direction. You might not get this right the first time. If you click the wrong flip along thing, it's okay. Just hit undo and go select blue or green until it flips the way that you want. And so I'll take the move tool, snap these things together, select both, copy these two, and while these two are still selected, I'm gonna right click and say flip along. And I know that this is the green direction. And I'm, so, I'm gonna flip them along green. And you can see here that the round over is now opposite. So I can select these two and bring them together like this. So now we have this tabletop quartered up. And the really neat thing about this is now if I click into this component, whatever I do to one happens to all of the others. So it'll allow you to quickly edit a table like this and have everything lined up perfectly. And no matter what you do, it gets mirrored across the table. And so the last step to this, um, if you're making a single tabletop like this, you don't want all of these crossing lines over here. So you can click into a component, you can select the erase tool and you can hold down shift and you can erase the crossing lines. And if we want to be really neat about it, we can go underneath and erase those crossing lines. And when we go back out of this component, you can see we've got a nice mirrored, easily editable tabletop that we can then put on our table legs over here, like this. Put this one over here, move it along like that. And it's all mirrored, there you go. If you want to design something in SketchUp and actually produce it using a digital fabrication tool like a 3D printer or a CNC machine, you actually need more programs than just SketchUp, believe it or not. Um, and the workflow looks like this. You essentially design in CAD, in this case SketchUp, and then if you want to 3D print, you export an STL file to what's called a slicer. 
Um, and then you can put that file that has been sliced into your 3D printer so that you can print it. Uh, some of the popular slicers one I like to use is called um, Cura. It's made by Ultimaker. You can actually use it for just about any 3D printer. And this will take your SketchUp model and slice it into layers that your 3D printer can understand. If you were doing CNC machining, you would take your SketchUp model, you'd export something called CAM software, which will then look at all the vectors in your model and plot the lines that your CNC machine needs to cut. So you can then take that file and put it into your CNC machine. Um, a typical piece of CAM software looks like this. This is a Vectrix V-Carve, and these are all the flat parts that you might cut out on a CNC machine. Um, this is an imported SketchUp model. And these are all the lines that your uh, CNC machine will follow to cut out the parts. To model for 3D printing, you need to model everything in what's called a solid model in SketchUp. Um, so what is a solid model? Well, SketchUp is a face modeler. And so what that means is if you have a cube or something like this, think of this as actually like a big empty box. So if I just delete this top face, you kind of see inside the box. And a solid is a group or a component that is completely watertight. So I'm gonna make this a group here. And so when you think of something that's a solid, you wanna be able to submerge an object, no matter how simple or complex it is, underwater and have no water leak inside this model. So right now, if you were to put this one underwater, there's no place uh, that any of the water can leak in. So this is a solid model. And we can check that by going to Entity Info with the group or component selected. And you can see that this is listed as a solid group and it has a volume calculation. So if, we, if you have a hole in your model, let's say I put a literal hole in the model. So now I can kind of see in this box, that's a huge leak where water can get inside. So if I go back outside and I select this, this is not a solid anymore. So you can repair a solid by filling in this circle or just removing it, and it will go back to being a watertight model. So any kind of 3D printing you do, Whatever it is that you draw and export, you want to be a solid model, and this is how you tell if it's a solid or not. There are cases where you will get a stray piece of geometry, for instance. So let's say there was a little tiny line segment over here, and that will actually cause a model to not calculate as a solid, and that might be confusing, because you could look at this and go, well, there's no holes in here. If I submerge this underwater, this would be a watertight model, but why isn't SketchUp saying that is a solid? And for things like that, that's where an extension called Solid Inspector comes in. So you can load up Solid Inspector, you can select your group or component. And in this case, we've got a stray edge here. And it says there's one stray edge and it's actually highlighted red over here. And if you press tabs, it, this extension will zoom you really close into that problematic area. Um, and in this case, we can actually get Solid Inspector to do the work for us to fix this. So if I press fix, it's gonna remove that stray edge and it's gonna say no errors, everything is shiny. And if we look in Entity Info, you will see that this is a solid group, which is what we want, and then has a volume calculation. So we are ready to 3D print this solid. This tip I call kit of parts. So let's say you were designing and 3D printing name tags like this. So we want the first one to say SketchUp, but let's say you want the next one to say your cat, your dog's name. Um, you probably want to recycle the same base, but put new text on it. So what you can do is make the different text parts. So in this case, I will put my cat's name over here. And what I would do to prep the SketchUp name tag for 3D printing is select both of these solids copy them over here, use the outer shell tool to merge these together. So now I can export this part as a 3D printable model. And when you outer shell something, it's kind of destructive, right? So if I wanted to go back in and remove the SketchUp text, it's you can do it, but it's a little bit tedious. I'd have to sort of push pull all of these letters down and then select this geometry and kind of delete everything. And that can take you a lot of time. So with the kit of parts method, you can outer shell your parts together, but keep your original separate parts over in a different spot in your model. So if you want to 3D print the next name tag, you can just remove the SketchUp text, take your new text, place it on top like this, delete this thing because we've already 3D printed it, select these, copy them and move them over here, 
outer shell those and export this for 3D printing. So again, this is called kit of parts. Um, you'll typically see in a lot of my 3D printed models, I have lots of parts all over the place. So don't be afraid to have a messy model. This can actually save you a lot of time in the long run if you're doing complex 3D prints or 3D prints that change a lot. If you've been using SketchUp for 3D printing in the past several years, you may have needed to export an STL. In fact, you have to export an STL for 3D printing. And in all previous versions of SketchUp, the SketchUp team gave you a free extension to export an STL, but it was an extension that you had to go download and add to SketchUp. Now it is a part of SketchUp, it's actually built in. So if you're using SketchUp 2019 and you're not sure if you have the SketchUp extension, you have it. All you have to do is go to File, Export, 3D model, and you go down here and select STL, and then you can bring that into your favorite 3D print slicer without installing any extra extensions. Okay, for this tip, I'm gonna show you how to send somebody some really quick dimensions on a model without doing a ton of work and layout. So if you were gonna be fabricating this piece of furniture, you'd probably wanna spend at least an hour or two in layout doing a really detailed model. But let's say you wanna just send a client a screenshot of it to get a design approval. Um, there's a much better way of getting the dimensions other than literally screenshotting your model. And for that, we can use layout. Uh, so what you wanna do is, is take your model and make sure the front of it is lined up with the red axis here in SketchUp and that the side of it is lined up with green axis and that it's sitting on the ground like this. And that's really all you have to do. You don't have to set up any styles or any scenes or any of that other complicated stuff that you normally do for a really complex and detailed layout model. And once you have those set up, you can go to File and go to Send to Layout. So once you send your model to Layout, it's gonna come in in whatever view that you last left it in SketchUp. And so one of the first things we're gonna do here is we're gonna right click this viewport and we're gonna go down to Standard Views and I'm gonna select Front. And because we had this model and SketchUp lined up along the red axis, when we select front, we're actually seeing the front of that piece of furniture. You can double click in the viewport and hold down shift and you can pan it around so that your piece of furniture is centered in the view. And we'll just hit escape to get back out of that viewport. And then you can just grab your viewports, move them around like this. You can copy them in layout and you can right click the next one and say standard views and we will say left. So we get a nice left view of this. We can alter our viewport size like this. We can go into SketchUp model and give these viewports a nice white background like this. And then the next step is just showing some general dimensions. So if you want to give somebody an idea of how high and how wide these are, you can go like this and we can change our units if we want. Go to dimension style, maybe we'll do something a little more normal for furniture like this down to a quarter of an inch. And so you can see here in under a minute, you're able to get a model that you could then either screenshot or save out as a PDF and send along to somebody for design approval using layout. So let's say you are modeling something in SketchUp that's really, really tiny. Like say this little microchip here. We can tell this is pretty tiny because it's pretty small compared to Mark's foot. I'd say pretty big as far as a microchip is concerned, but pretty small in terms of a model. And sometimes in SketchUp, when you're using tools like the solid tools or the follow me tool, or even just drawing little, little tiny lines, you can run into problems where a face won't get created or a solid operation won't work or you won't be able to do a follow me. And there's actually a really clever trick to get around this. So you can take all these parts here, we've got the little legs and this microchip in the body, and you can make them all a component like this. Select them all, make them component. The name doesn't matter. And we're actually going to make a copy of this microchip component and put it over here. And we're going to use our scale tool and we're going to scale it up a thousand times, two thousand times, ten thousand times as big as the original. And what's neat about this trick is when you scale a component, even though the two microchips are a different size, whatever edit you do to one happens to the other one. So let's say I go in here and move one of these legs away like this, and we go back down to our little tiny microchip, you can see that the leg is also moved here. And typically, when you run into a problem with a follow me or a solid operation not working, it will work on a larger model. The SketchUp at its core is an architectural modeler. So if you ever run into this problem, try the same thing you were doing on the larger scaled up component, and it will 
almost all the time work, and then that change will translate down to your tiny model. So this is a really effective technique if you're doing a lot of small things for circuitry or 3D printing or really anything that's on a very, very small scale. All right, and this is a little bit of a self-serving tip, but one I think will be very useful if you are exporting anything from SketchUp out to CNC or laser cutting. So let's say you wanted to CNC cut out this sawhorse. Um, the way you do it is to model it in SketchUp and then to export it, you'd have to, in SketchUp, use the move tool and kind of take it apart piece by piece and rotate all the parts, um, flatten them out like this. And not something like this, this can take you 10 or 15 minutes if you're really quick at SketchUp. But then you have to export all of the flat parts into a piece of CAM software like this. And what happens when you bring these vectors in, the vectors are all loose, so you don't have smooth curves. And if you've ever done this before in any CAM software or Illustrator or really any other third-party vector software, there's a lot of post-processing. So this plugin called Faber actually does all of this automatically for you. So I'll show you how it works on the sawhorse. Essentially, if you wanted to make the sawhorse, you model it, select all of the parts for the sawhorse, uh, click the extension, um, this is called the Faber SVG exporting extension. We'll have a link in the description. And you export out your file. So we'll just call this one Sawhorse 1. And this is going to build an SVG file. So this plugin is actually going around and scanning all the parts of your model and figuring out how to flatten it out automatically. So what we can do now is go into our favorite CAM software or illustration software and we can import that SVG. And so here are all the parts for that sawhorse. We'll nest them in here so you can see them. So we've essentially taken two plus hours of work of vector cleanup and exporting and flattening and turned it into about a minute. Um, and so that is, I believe, to be the quickest way to get anything from SketchUp into CNC or laser cutting. And that's the tip. Thank you for watching all the tips. I would say the high level and biggest takeaway is that do as much in SketchUp as possible. When you're building things in the shop or you're 3D printing, especially parts that fit together or are part of a bigger assembly, it may seem a little tedious, but the more things that you can figure out in SketchUp, the easier that's gonna be in your fabrication process, whether you're going to cam software, going to a slicer, or just going and building something with manual tools in your bare hands. The more stuff you can figure out ahead of time, the better, cleaner, and nicer, and better fitting, whatever it is that you're fabricating will be. And thankfully, we've got a great tool like SketchUp to help you do that. Um, for any of the specific extensions like Faber or Saw Inspector, we'll have links in the description below so you can go find and download and install those extensions. Um, my name is Eric Schumelfenny and thank you very much for watching my tips.